so in the previous lecture we have studied uh, uh, tamas by bhishm sani and we discussed two important short stories uh, that is by salt by mashweta devi and uh, birthday by bashir right and today we'll discuss one drama that is a uh, very famous and you know one of the icon iconic texts of uh, girish karnad that was tughlaq and then we'll discuss two short stories that is one is empty Ch uh, chest by indira goswami and the compromise by vijudan datta right so first of all let's start with the tughlaq by girish karnad right tughlaq and hayavadana are you know the most iconic texts of uh, girish karnad and he has uh, known for the contemporary portrayals right so his, his dramas his, his theater right the theatrical uh, performances and the, the written text were actually based on the you know con they were more contemporary he was uh, though he was you know mingling a lot of historical and political comments and symbolism in uh, his texts but they are actually you know they they gives you a lot of insight into the contemporary scenario of the nation so this was the reason that he is one of the you know intellectual a dramatist of uh, india those who are actually mingling uh, religion mythology history and even politics to 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 create a different consciousness in the people rather than just entertaining the people right so it was a, you know his plays are a quite a good mixture of entertainment and uh, even you know education as well right so we will be discussing tughlaq uh, he has written tughlaq in 1964 it was actually a kannada play and he himself you know translated the whole thing into uh, english as well so it was an in indian kannada play we have already discussed that how indian you know indian english drama was not much uh, popular in in india right because india was actually a kind of a, you know an alien language a foreign language uh, when it comes to the you know, 1960s and after just after the 2025 uh, years of independence so it it was more or less an uh, a language that where people are not comfortable you know uh, in in speaking and listening so this was the reason that indian english drama was not at all focusing on the entertainment part but it has a lot of intellectual texts right in order to raise awareness for the same goes with the mahesh datani's final solution right so we were actually we were talking uh, about the partition the hindu muslim rights the sikh uh, no the communal uh, harmony so you must read uh, mahesh datani's final solution which is also one of a very important and thought provoking text at what we have in indian english drama and today we'll start with the uh, tughlaq uh, tughlaq by uh, girish karnad so you must have heard of the name tughlaq i believe shushmita mohammed bin tughlaq yes ma'am yes ma'am so so uh, how do you perceive tughlaq have you read anything or oh, any interesting fact that you would like to share with us about the mohammed bin tughlaq uh, ma'am uh, was it the mohammed bin tughlaq who changed the capital of india yes he was the same one and he he minted the coins in silver yes same uh same. i think he is considered one of the stupid uh, stupid uh, you know kings at uh, uh, mughal yeah. king he is actually a man of paradoxes that you would say he was really an eccentric fellow right so yes. that is what we can say about all the politicians of the world and especially when it comes to you know a democratic and you uh, know a, 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 a nation who is actually a nation of plurality right so we have so many plurals here so we are we are actually living in so much plurality right so we are so many plurals uh, when it comes to language religion festivals traditions and so so we are actually living in diversity so you know so so this was the reason that you know by quoting the example of muhammad bin tughlaq and his eccentricity the complex and you know the the uh, the contradictions of the character and personality of the tughlaq and even uh, his plans about you know the futuristic plans that he has about his kingdom so this way uh, girish karnad is actually you know giving us the commentary on the you know contemporary politics what was actually happening in the politics so though he uh, though he was actually commenting on 1960s politics the nehruvian era right so basically he was criticizing or you could say a lot he is giving a lot of insights on the futuristic plans of the jawaharlal nehru that how you know nehruvian era that the, the congress was driven by the futuristic and too much idealism of uh, jawaharlal nehru and but on the other hand the play is still very much relevant because every single uh, you could say every single 
uh, politician or political leader or or, or the uh, you know the, uh, the 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 head of the nation be it as a prime minister or a chief minister so you will feel that we they all are eccentric they all are uh, to some uh, somewhere down they are they have this mixture of the uh, in his personality so this was the reason basically uh, Grish Kanad was actually giving the commentary on the politics of 1960 this was the reason that this place contained historical as well as some political aspects as well right by quoting the history he just wants to convey the uh, message that the history repeats itself right so though it, it means that that history is same and it, it keeps on repeating that you know uh, on the uh, if we learn on the very moral ground so it was uh, the message was that we never learn from history right and this was the reason that we keep on making mistakes again and again uh, and we prove that that history will repeat itself this was the reason that the recurrent pattern the recurrent you could say the themes you know keep keep coming up and keep cropping up again and again so this was the reason that though he was commenting on the too much idealism of the Nehruvian era so the same goes you could uh, you, even you can you know uh, analyze the whole play or you can analyze the whole themes under the lenses of you know uh, the congress uh, obsession with the nehru's uh, too much of idealism and, and even when we talk about the contemporary government how contemporary government was actually you know actually was sailing on the and uh, too much of idealism by giving, you know, people by, again and again quoting Achhe Din, Achhe Din, Achhe Din. So same uh, was the case of Tughlaq. So Tughlaq was actually, you know, hoping for the Achhe Din. Tughlaq was actually creating the idea of Achhe Din with too much of idealism. But on the other hand, we'll get to know about the, you know, the real politics. And this was the reason that this text falls under the writings from the margin that that how the political leader even yesterday we were talking about partition that partition uh, uh, is all about the shadow lies it is all about the lines edged by our political leaders and you know the only the only poor and the helpless will suffer right the real victims are the people who have who had no you know who had who had no involvement in such kind of things they don't want uh, you know the, uh, their neighbors to, to to turn into enemies but on the other hand because of the because of the politics because of the you know the the, the strategic plans by this uh, political leaders to you know assert authority over others they plan such kind of things they manipulate the situations right so same goes here that that here you know the politicians the leaders uh, and the kings like you know muhammad bin tughlaq so they though they pretend that and even you know they they have the inclination to serve uh, the people to serve the masses to think for the you know social welfare but on the other hand we'll get to know that how they themselves got cheated you know the, how the polit politics is a dirty game of scoundrels and how you know how everybody they have the eccentricities and you know uh, and they as the, there's a very popular phrase that they all care for their own kursi right so everybody is uh, you know, after the chair everybody is after the chair and nobody you know so this was the reason there will be few conspiracies where he himself killed uh, his father and his brother so it, it it talks about a lot of lot of elements right and it gives us insight into the contemporary politics though he was actually you know criticizing and focusing about the futuristic and too much idealism of the nehruvian era but on the other hand the play is still relevant in the contemporary theme because if you can you know analyze the present day government or a government who was 15 years back right so the same goes with the reign of uh, manmohan singh right so so the such kind of a too much of idealism and there are a lot of policies right so we have the policies of a demonetization there people suffer we have you know even we have discussed when we were discussing you know the bheel we were discussing the, the the migrant workers that how much they suffered right with just you know with, with the uh, uh the with the announcement of the sudden lockdown the lockdown was announced you know without even taking into consideration that there were a lot of people migrating here and there there are a lot of migrant workers in the other states and there are a lot of people right who are in the dire need of help so this was the reason that it talks about you know the kings or the politicians uh, eccentric policies and plans as well that they don't you know they they they, they really don't care about the common people though they pretend that these policies these acts are for the welfare of the masses but on the other hand in the end you will feel that these eccentric things are actually you know it's it, it just uh, these uh, policies just 
you know, put into plan without even much consideration and, you know, sometimes with too much of idealism and sometimes with no ground level report. So this was the reason these plans completely, you know, turned out to be a complete failures in the, uh, in the future. So this was the reason that too much of a, too much idealism of the Nehruism, right? You know, the Johanna Nehru's futuristic uh, ideas and plans, right? How they fell flat in the independent modern India when we were talking about, you know, 1960s. You know, about so many years of independence, right? So this was the reason that we will be talking about Tughlaq, but it has the close connotations, you know, with all the political leaders and the contemporary politics, as we can quote the same example in order to analyze any of the leader, right? And same when we were talking about, you know, Muhammad bin Tughlaq, even you can comment on the world politics that how, you know, the Putin, how he was driven with the idea of, you know, uh, you know, just uh, attacking on the, you know, uh, attacking on the, the Ukraine, the, the whole uh, Russia-Ukraine wall. You will talk about that. That really they are, uh, you know, a people full of eccentricities, a man with eccentricities, right? So, you, and same goes with Hitler as well, right? He has an abused childhood. He ha, he was having a traumatic childhood, and how he ruined the life of so many people. So, so, the, so we, so these uh, politicians, these leaders, you know, the so-called, you know, the world leaders, even the you know the nation leaders, ministers, they they have this, they have this, you know. Tughlaq eccentricities. This was the reason that something which is, you know, very much eccentric, something which is impractical, we used to, you know, uh, term it as Tughlaqi Firman. So, so these kind of Tughlaqi Firmans that we used to, you know, quote for our Indian policies that that they will be just implemented without much thought and clarity. And ultimately, the poor, ultimately, the helpless people, you know, common man who who has the right to vote will ultimately suffer in the end, right? So I hope you will get the, you have got the, you know, fair enough idea. So let's start with the play, basically. So I have uh, discussed about you know, a, a quick overview. Let's talk about basically here. Uh, the main character is Muhammad bin Tughlaq. And I has I've already told you that it, uh, the Rish Kanad has taken a lot of historical elements and you know and mingled it with uh, uh, with the political commentary and there we don't have a kind of auto you know uh, sorry biographical touches right so he was not you know writing about the biography but on the other hand he has picked up few few of the aspects from the personality of muhammad bin tughlaq to to portray a whole full-fledged character that we can you know that we can actually identify with the leaders of the contemporary politics. So same as we will definitely discuss the two more points that you were talking about, that how he shifted the capital from Delhi to Daltabad and how he 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 uh, put the same value to the copper and brass coins as he was, uh, and rated them as gold and silver. So this was the reason that people have started, you know, minting their own coins and, and they are exchanging it with gold and silver. So such were the, actually the failures of, uh, his uh, too much of uh, idealistic plans, right? So basically, when we were talking about, we have the main character that is Tughlaq, right? Muhammad bin Tughlaq, and then we have when we where, when it comes to the Tughlaq, right? We have uh, his stepmother, and then we have uh, uh, a lot of uh, you could say her his courtiers. We have the uh, uh, mention of Sheikh Imamuddin, and then we have Ratan Singh and others. And on the other hand, then we have two two characters in order to make it contemporary. Uh, Karish Kanad had invented the character that is Aziz and Azam, right? So basically, Aziz and Azam are a form of Shakespearean clowns, right? So what we have the idea of Shakespeare's comic relief, Shakespeare's clowns, right? So those are the imposters, those are the tricksters, tricksters they, they are the ultimate, you know, the reason of comic relief, their eccentric actions will ultimately lead to comedy and provides you know provides a, a, a kind of escape from the serious theme and on the other hand the both characters right it it, it, it will lend a, a kind of a comic edge to the whole of the story of the play so right so we have aziz and azam so they both are a petty thieves basically so they will be the petty thieves but in the end they will be emerge to be the you know the imposters and who will ultimately you know, probe or trick the um, uh, Sultan that is Muhammad bin Tughlaq and how he got tricked. This, that was all of the story of the, the play. So basically, we'll be starting with the Tughlaq. So here we have Muhammad bin Tughlaq. So we have already know about, you know, how he is an historical figure. He was a 14th century Turko Indian ruler. And uh, he was actually a great visionary. When we talk about, you know, his personal life and when we talk about you know, the ideas and the great ideals he have, so very important parts of his personality. And when we talk about the good aspects of his 
uh, personality. So very important part is that is he is a great visionary, right? So he is a man of great ideas and visions, right? And because he doesn't believe in any kind of a communal disharmony, right? So on the other hand, he is a man of tolerance. So this was the reason that he was a great visionary, and and his plans, his plans are targeting for the welfare of the masses. So he is actually somebody who is, was actually you know thinking of the welfare of the masses as every leader, every king, you know. Uh, professes himself to be right so all the leaders all the kings they, they they themselves say all the time that we put our people above us right so same goes with muhammad bin tughlaq right and he was a man of great ideals like every other leader or every other politician of the india right when they talk about the unified india when they talk about the independent and democratic india so this was the same goes with the you know muhammad bin tughlaq that how he is an idealistic you know he is an idealistic king who who has great ideas and this was the reason that he really wants to you know change the capital and he even took the decision of changing the coins we'll come to know that what was actually the you know motivation behind the ideas but on the other hand, uh, in the real, right? So he, though he was a dreamer, though he is a man of action, benevolent. But on the other hand, when we talk about you know other aspects, he was very cru cruel and he was sometimes careless as well, right? He was very very wicked uh, man who tried everything, who used people, who manipulate people just in order to be on the throne, right? Just to save the throne, right? So very first example that we got to know when we were talking about the Tughlaq, that how he became the Sultan of Delhi, right? So how he, uh, you know, how he ascended to the throne of the Delhi. So the reason was that he killed uh, his own uh, father and his own uh, brother as well, right? So the reason behind the killing of uh, his father and son was very much evident that he doesn't want to, you know, uh, his father and uh, his his brother to rule the uh, throne, right? And the kind of a trick that he used uh, for, you know, for the killing that you we know it very well that, uh, you know, uh, in the Islam, the idea of the prayer was very much important, right? So what they call is namaz padna. So, so, so they, they they bend down you know in order to chant the name of allah right in order to remember the name of allah and whenever you know we think about the the whole scene or visual of the namaz so we we get to know that it is a very sacred practice a sacred activity you know for the muslims right so so but on the other hand muhammad bin tughlaq he has used this uh, you know he has used the sacred activity as a very important you know weapon or a tool so what he did is whenever there was prayer right the prayer was going on you know it very well that all the muslims they will you know they will put their weapons aside and they will you know kneel down uh, in order to remember the name of the you know in order to remember the name of the allah so so uh, Tughlaq, he, he he got the opportunity and he went to the chamber where his, his uh, you know, brother or his father was actually praying and he killed them on the spot, right? And but on the other hand, there were you know uh, there were no courtiers, there were no bodyguards because they all were busy in the busy in the prayers, right? And uh, and 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 even if they will come, they will they you know they, they were devoid of any kind of a weapon, right? Because they have already put their weapons aside. So this is how you know he he actually killed his his father and uh, and his brother, right? So there we got to know that how much cruel and careless he is, right? So he is definitely a very wicked man, uh, really a manipulator, right? Just just to get the throne, like like any on such kind of a cheap tactics. When we talk about you know how he got the throne, that is very much evident when we talk about the contemporary politics, right? So uh, though you know we we talk about you know a multi-party system, but we know it very well that how you know how our ministers, you know they 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 kill each other's reputation, they assassinated each other, right? By the way of words you know talking about talking so ill about each other on the camera on in the media conferences even on the open stage by you know addressing the gathering so such kind of you know assassination of the reputation was very much common and on the other hand this uh, you know e even the killing of each other for the throne for the chair is very much common right so this is how you know the, the very important theme of power right that how people you know people and, you know, got mad, you know, they, they went to any extent in order to get the power, right? So this is what has happened with Tughlaq as well, that how he got the power by killing his own father and uh, his own brother, right? And and that too, in, in, in a very cruel and in, in a very, you know, in, in a very wicked manner, right? So look at it, a person who, who poses himself to be a believer, right? In, in, in the Muslim faith, right? So look at it, can you even, you know, imagine or think about it, that such kind of, you know, such kind of heinous act, right? Such kind of heinous, heinous act of killing his own 
own father and brother could be happen and you know uh, uh, for, for, you know in in the mind of a muslim that to at the time of you know at the time of prayer at the time at the time of namaz right so this is how he got to the throne and uh, Uh, and and the time and the time he ascended to the throne he, he actually put a ban on the prayer right because he he was very much you know afraid of the same deed that people will commit the same deed to you know him himself as well so this was the reason that the first eccentric the season as a muslim that he took that was actually banning the prayer so he was completely you know against the idea of the prayer because he was very much afraid right that somebody will uh, you know kill him in the same way that he killed his father and brother so this was the reason that he actually put a you know ban on the prayer right so that was all about you know the, the family relationships but on the other hand when we talk about the other things right so he is actually you know somebody who is very much idealistic when the you know when the pursuit of the idol and you know how the whole prey is structured on the opposite so one time you will feel that he was actually taking yes shushmita Ma'am, did he put ban on uh, prayer on uh, you know Muslim prayer? Yes, yes. The prayers was meant for you know we we talked about the idea of namaz that people will kneel down you know in in the, the act of kneeling down was all about you know completely submitting to the will of God, right? But he 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 doesn't want to submit because he was afraid that if he will submit, then somebody will definitely come and attack. He really want himself to be very much guarded. Okay. I hope this makes sense. Yes, yes. And on the other hand, you know it very well that how you know somebody who is guilty from the inside, right? So he really wants to make others people, you know, uh, other people see, you know, uh, see or look at the, uh, under the same lens, right? So this was the same reason that he banned the prayers. Yes, and and then we'll talk about you know how the whole play is structured on such kind of opposites. On one time you feel that he was actually you know he was actually thinking about the people. He really wants to you know uh, he really wants to be an ideal king, an ideal man. He really wants to you know do so much for the you know upliftment and betterment of the uh, of the masses, uh, and you know emerges to be the divine aspiration, right? He really wants to become the divine uh, in the eyes of the people. but on the other hand you know the, then we have such kind of a cruel acts that he was actually indulging in uh, so he was actually you know somebody who is actually you know a good manipulator he he knows how to manipulate the thing right so that is what all about a leader is right so so he was definitely talking about you know justice equality progress and peace right so this was the reason that he was very secular as well when we talking about you know the uh, uh, the overall you know personality of the muhammad bin tughlaq so he was not at all you know somebody who is radical but on the other hand he was very much secular uh, in his reign you know the hindus were very much under you know safety and security and there's the same incident will 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 come to know that how you know he he, he got hit, tricked by aziz because aziz changed his identity into a hindu brahmin and named himself as vishnu prasad right so there we got to know that you know not just from the ideal you know not just from the ideals and real plans that he even you know used religious tolerance and secularism as a political strategy he really want to emerge as a divine figure for all right be it hindus or muslims so this was the reason that he was actually using the tool of religious tolerance he was using the tool of secular secularism as a political strategy right so and and we will be talking about you know the high ideals the idea of secularism and the religious tolerance you know the, the, again and again you know the mention of the congress right the the ideals of the nehru and gandhi you know the, the, that that keeps coming uh, into our mind that how you know the congress uh, is said to be the secular in you know, a secular government right because they really want to appease and please all the interests of the minorities you know be it six jains buddhas and e- even the muslims but on the other hand the current government when we talking about you know the 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 bjp then it was always you know charged against they they, they were actually charged against that how they are you know they how they are against one one sect of the society right so the, so this was the reason that you know the, the whole commentary of the you know the girish karnad can be you know can be analyzed under the, the the present frame that that how he he was actually depicting the political leaders right so political leaders that for them then they will do anything they will do any kind of a strategy be it secularism and the religious tolerance uh, you know and they they can they will use any kind of a strategy for 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 their 
political uh, political rising right so here the idea of the political tolerance the secularism right so it was you know directly hitting at uh, you know jawaharlal nehru's idea of the secular state you know the idea proposed by gandhi and uh, further carry forward by the congress and under the nehruvian ideals right so the same strategy was actually used by mohammed bin tughlaq that he used religious tolerance as a political strategy right he was actually you know so uh, and even you know uh, the banning of the practice of, 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 of the prayers right so so that also sheds that he was not at all a radical who was actually in the interest of one, just one one of the community right so we'll be starting the play so first of all as we will uh, as we have already discussed that how he ascended to the throne right so by killing uh, his own father and uh, his own brother right so this was a reason that you must have you know uh, analyzed so far that he was not at all a man who is very pious and you know simple and really wants to be a divine inspiration but on the other hand he is a manipulator he 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 can do you know he went on any extent to get his things done so the same way and uh, and then after you know ascending to the throne there are two iconic decisions that we, you already know that that he took you know for the betterment of the society for the betterment of the masses right so the first of all that was for the shifting of the capital from delhi to jaltabad and second decision that was that that uh, he announced that that how cop copper and brass coins will be treated as same as gold and Uh, silver coins right so first of all we'll discuss the decision of shifting of the capital from delhi to daltapa so basically this is not a play which has you know acts and then the scene so it 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 is a very small play and it has different three 13 scenes right so there are 13 scenes so in one scene we will be talking about you know uh, tugluk's uh, tugluk's uh, conversation with his stepmother where he was actually worried about tugluk and on the other hand there was a last scene there is a long soliloquy where he was actually you know thinking that how he was actually suffering from insomnia we'll 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 uh, conclude the part later. to right so here we will be talking about the scene where you know the first decision that was you know that was actually taken by tugluk and this was the reason that people you know people were first of all you know whenever their new policy came and whenever you know a- any kind of a new announcement nowadays we just have announcements on the name of policy so whenever there is a new announcement came you know the people the people uh, are, are you know the people actually are in a full of hope that that it, it must be for the betterment of the society it it it, it, it will be in the favor of the society so same goes the people that you know people were enthusiastic people were hopeful that you know their their king is doing something for and they they're good right but on the other hand ultimately they got disillusioned and even you know sultan himself got disillusioned about the ideas and in the end we'll got to know that how he will be termed as foolish tugluk right he was he, he will be termed as a foolish king and the same as we have you know when we talk about the uh, the other politicians that that how they you know the big plans the big plans the big promises you know even when we talk about you know the uh, uh the government of you know delhi you know the, the aap government that how you know it was all about the big big plans they were they were actually you know made so much you know uh, bulky promises to people right so much big and hefty promises to people that they will give this they will provide that and they will do everything so but on the other hand you know the whole reputation of the, you know the party and how you know the people got disillusioned very easily you know when, when they got to know that that how the plans how the promises how the hefty you know policies that they were actually making that was not in the benefit of them but on the other hand it was you know more or less uh, affecting the masses in in, in in very badly you know so so same goes here that the first of all he took the decision that he will be shifting the capital from delhi to daltabad so dalta was basically uh, on the indian map during the mogul empire was in the south india right so before uh, you know giving my comments on that i would like to know about your dis- uh, you know, your interpretation that what do you think that why did he uh, you know take such kind of a decision what was the uh, aspiration and, and and what would be the motivation of of uh, sultan mohammed bin tughlaq what do you think shushmita that why he has taken such a decision my my no idea okay so uh, basically uh, as i have already discussed that you know delhi delhi from the daltabad and i have given you the little location that how daltabad was situated in the uh, southern part of india so basically first thing that the, there were two reasons that why he really, you know he really took this this is 
children. So first of all, you know, the basic thing that you really want to, you know, rule over the southern part of the world. Uh, when you know, of, you know, when you when we talk about the Mughal Empire in India, right? So basically, the Mughals they came from, you know, they came from Pakistan and Afghanistan, and how you know the the whole the whole focus was on the north, the north, you know, north India, right? So so they have fought, they have conquered north india right most of the north india and and uh, and north indian people this was the reason that the north indian right the north indians uh, you know the, the caste community the, the major chunk of uh, you know, north india they are said to be the warrior classes right so they are people who are filled with courage valor and strength right because they have fought with these mughal kings they have fought with these rulers these you know the, these these crusaders as you can say that with, with a lot of courage and with a lot of strength right and this was the reason that you know the whole of destructions of the temples were only there in the north india but on the other hand there in the southern part of the india you will be having the iconic temples you will be having the asian temples right because it was the north india right so north indian people they fought with the mughal empire they fought with the mughal kings right and, and this is how you know the sort the, the the you could say the the, the ancient heritage of the the south india survived so far right and this was the reason that the north india is much more prone to the modernity or you could say you know the 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 uh, the lot of you know the more modernity westernization and even you know the, the it, it it carries the traces of mughal empire so the first of all his decision was was to rule over the southern part of the india right he really wants to rule over the south india so this was the reason that he was thinking of his capital because you know it very well that that wherever the the capital of a state is right the whole control the centralized body will be that state will be that particular city and will be that particular reason so he was thinking of you know shifting the uh, uh, capital city from delhi to daltabad because delhi was actually you know set to be the throne right the ultimate throne of the india right and 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 it was said to be you know the sultan sultanate because of the delhi and this was the reason that he really want to conquer whole uh, of the the whole of the india and especially he wants to conquer the south india so this was the reason that uh, you know he, he actually you know shifted the uh, the the capital from delhi to daltabad and and the reason behind this is well you we know it very well that how south india was actually of of uh, hindu majority right and uh, by the time you know the mughals they reach uh, south india right so 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 there will not be so much dense population of you know uh, muslims right so even this was the reason as well he really wants to you know uh, have the muslim uh, population there and he really wants to you know have a fraternity he really wants to have you know a unity of of muslim and uh, hindu in the southern part of the world right so he really wants to not to not wants to just rule the south india he really wants to you know have a unity fraternity and on the other hand he really wants to have this muslim and you know hindu equation well there in the south india which was very rare to found uh, rare to find in the uh, you could say in the history when it comes to you know we will be talking about south india and the second reason that as uh, you know we have already discussed that that how you know in north india was under the constant you know constant uh, invasions and how it was the uh, constant you know attacks and threat uh, by the mughals right so he was actually even fearful about this fact as well right because he knows that that one day you know uh, there will be any other mughal king right who will come and you know who will come and attack uh, uh, sultan and, and 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 they will replace the sultan and they will replace the tughlaq right so this was the reason that in order to save the capital in order to save his own reign in order to save his own kingdom right he shifted the whole thing right he shifted the whole capital from delhi to daltabad i hope this makes sense do you have any query uh, no ma'am right but on the other hand when we'll be talking about that how you know his decision was very much self centric right his decision was just for the you know the centralization of the uh, you know the administration and we'll talk about you know the leadership that how he really wants to emerge as the as the leader of the india as the, you know as, as the sultan and king of the india right and not even just conquering the north india and even conquering the south india as well but on the other hand he really wants to you know advertise he advertised the idea he he he, he advertised the idea that he really wants to create a hindu muslim unity he really wants to you know do good for the south indians and he really wants to you know uh, you know build and 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 do for the progress of the south india so this was the reason that he was shifting the capital from delhi to daltabad right so he though he advertised the the, the plan of uh, you know shifting of the capital from delhi to daltabad in such way but we know it very well that it has you know a, 
uh, uh, very bad consequences, right? So when we were talking about the shifting, so the, the migration. So yesterday, when we discussed about the partition, so so so, so such you know such migration, the, such a displacement, and the kind of exodus was 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 very much painful for the common people, right? Because when he when he was you know he took the decision of shifting the capital from you know the cap Delhi to Jaltabad, you know it very well that that how much people will suffer in this kind of a decision. Though he left it to the discretion of the people, he he didn't force his public that. That, uh, that uh, you know the people will shift but on the other hand uh, first of all one thing that uh, that is for sure that you know wherever they will be the leader the followers will be there right so they really don't want to leave the king they really want you know they really want to live under the mercy of the king they really want to live under the favor of the king so this was the reason that you know uh, you know the, wherever he will go the people will you know, definitely follow him right so had he had he is just going to daltabad so it was very obvious in common that the people will definitely you know follow him to daltabad but on the other hand there were reports that you know when he was thinking about that that what if the people will you know the people uh, will not be after him the people will not be you know following him so there will be just forced you know forced uh, migrations as well right he forcefully took people from delhi to daltabad to show that that how much he is the you know the the king of uh, 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 how much you know how much big he he was actually a king how he how he is loved by the people that people were actually you know going from delhi to daltabad you know it very well that you know the distance from delhi to daltabad the distance from you know delhi to south india right so that was a very, quite a long distance so he really wants to you know advertise he really wants to you know uh, promote the idea to people that how much he was loved as a king that people were actually you know after him the people were actually following his policy and even before you know he is shifting to daltabad people have already started shifting but but the you know but it was all about the forceful displacement it was all about the forceful migration the kind of exodus that we were talking about yesterday even when we were talking about the partition so same thing that the, under this policy that he advertised to be the idealistic plan for south india right for the expansion of, of the kingdom and in order to safeguard the interests of the people from the other mughal rulers so under so many things he played his part and the, ultimately the victims will be the simple people right the simple common mass of common people those who suffered under this eccentric this season right so so this so this was the first you know tuglaki decision right the so typical eccentric decision that he, he he took that of the shifting the capital from delhi to daltabad i hope this much is clear yes ma'am right so second decision when we were talking about you know uh, as we have already discussed that how he, he though he was actually you know a great visionary he, he thinks that you know by you know by expanding the kingdom by you know uh, saving the you know the people and the kingdom from the you know invasions from the mughal invasions and, and by emerging to be you know emerging to be the divine aspiration emerging to be somebody you know who who, who was actually you know who was actually advocating justice equality and you know love to to his masters he really wants to be a leader of a unified india right so what we were actually talking about you know if if, if we study the same same ideas under the contemporary governments be it congress up or bjp right so every government tries to profess the same things that he really want to emerge as the leader of the masses right and they really want to you know do everything whatever kind of a policies they frame that was actually for the for, for the betterment of a unified india so so but on the other hand if, if we look at the realities that what actually happened during the shifting of the capital so the reality is completely different from oh, you know what they try to pose in front of the people in facts and even in their speeches i hope this much is clear i hope i'm making sense you know yes, I, I i really don't want to put any kind of a political comment on any kind of a party but uh, the reason is the play will be ever significant because it's talk about that how you know a leader was actually using the heat tactics with yes, to be any of the government that how the rural you know political leaders you know they pose that they are actually formulating they are framing the policies for the betterment of the people but it was nowhere near for the betterment it was just the betterment and it will just satisfy a few of the interests and the major people right for whom they are say you know they are designing and formulating the policies you know they they were on the fringes right their betterment their their uh, their interest were on the fringes they were just the marginalized voices right so ultimately in the end it would be every even it would be the big decision or it would be a short you know it would be a very small decision the only people who will suffer in in, in their policy making in their decision making that are the simple common 
people, right? So first of all, this was the decision, and second was, as uh, we have already, you know, uh, we are aware of that was the, you know, changing of the currency, right? So the changing of the currency is very much, you know, it, it, it very similar has the connotation of demonetization if you can relate that, right? So this gold, silver, ju uh, coins that he was actually, you know, so. Uh, the reason was that, right, he actually, you know, valued the same, you know, copper and brass coins. He made the announcements that now, you know, copper and brass coins will be treated as same as gold and silver, right? So there will be no difference between the currency. So, uh, again, I would like to know your view. What do you think that why would he has taken such kind of a centric decision? And what will be the motivation? Do you have any idea? And do you want to put any comment? Uh, maybe, uh, ma'am, maybe he have not thought uh, through this that the people will start minting their own coins he maybe he wants to uh, show the glory of his kingdom uh sorry uh, you, you were suggesting that he really wants people to mint his own coins no uh he didn't think it through uh okay. that that the people will do that okay uh, what, what would be his, his motivation why he has taken such kind of criticism Maybe he wants to show uh, the glory that, uh, uh, you know, his kingdom is so rich. Yes. So some way down the line, he really wants to, you know, he really wants to gloss over the edges, right? By by making people understand that, first of all, the decision was that, that he really wants to pose in front of the people that all are same in my kingdom, whether it is going to be rich or poor, right? And and he, he will treat the rich and poor in the same way, right? So whether it was a person, you know, uh, containing the gold coins and on the other hand, where there will be people, you know, having the copper coins, right? So on the other hand, he, he changed the whole currency into the copper and brass, right? So basically, that is what we have you know, during the demonetization that how the few notes got, you know, uh, uh, abolished from from the uh, from the you know from the currency of the india right so same uh, he did right he actually put forward the idea of the copper currency and he was actually you know he was actually thinking of you know uh, abolishing the idea of gold and silver so first of all the, the idea was that that he really wants to you know strike the edge and you know trying to create balance between the rich and poor right he really wants to as you know the, the whole uh, idea of the demonetization uh, was for the you know abolition of the kala dhan Right. So the, the illegal money, the, the, the money that was actually you know, uh, that was hoarded by the people uh, on the name of corruption. Right. By criminal. So the same the same was the idea of, you know, Muhammad bin Tughlaq that he really wants to, you know, he really wants to advertise the copper currency. He really wants to make copper currency as their national currency. Right. Because he really wants to you know, abolish the idea of the corruption that was actually in the form of gold and silver coins that what people have. You know, they have hoarding and 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 they, they they will be having by the way of corruption. He really wants to, you know, uh, even he really wants to end the idea of the corruption. So first thing was just for the equality, and second thing he was really wants to implement the idea for the sake of you know ending the corruption. He really wants to end the corruption from this uh, you know the uh, the nation. But on the other hand, the same thing, you know, again, the plan backfired. Uh, the reason is very much that you know, people have started, you know, minting money. They have opened their own, you know, mints and they were actually, you know, minting copper coins and not just minting the copper coins. They were even exchanging it for, you know, gold and silver because they know the value of gold and silver. The same thing happened during the, you know, demonetization when the when the announcement, you know, came, came into being at, at night. So people rushed to the, you know, rushed to buy gold jewelry that time because they know it very well right they can exchange their 2000 you know they, they can ex exchange the notes of 500 and thousand you know for the gold jewelry because they know it very well that it, it, it gold jewelry will never be banned ever by any of the country or by any of the state right so 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 they have this idea the same thing you know happened here as well that people have started you know they have started creating their own coins their own you know, copper coins and and and, and then they they were ac actually started exchanging it with the gold and silver because they know it very well that how this plan is totally going to be you know turned out to be a sham and ultimately gold and silver you know it very well right you cannot say that gold cannot be gold or silver cannot be silver right so gold and silver are and space so these gems or any anything you know anything which was highly priced they are un, you know they are undisputed masters right so they so even so you you, uh, you know this also you know hints the point that how you know people you know the decision of people and 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 the kind of you know trickery the people were using by minting the coins you know and then and then exchanging it for gold and silver it also hints on the point that how you know people are much more aware of the realities 
their leaders are not right the king is the king king was not at of that time right so king was too much idealistic king which king was you know king, king was too much eccentric you know king, king was actually you know, to, to, totally acting upon the you know opposites that on one time he was saying something else and on one time he was saying something else right so it, it so it also you know hints at the point that how you know the people the common people they have the ground level report they have the grassroots knowledge of everything but on the other hand sometimes leaders political leaders sometimes you know the kings they they are not at all aware of the ground level you know uh, the reports they are not even you know they have no knowledge of the grassroots you know they have no knowledge of you know the grass on the grassroots levels right so they they might not be sometimes aware of the predicaments that what kind of a decision they have taken that what oh, you know what, what consequences it will yield in the in the future right so same happens with the muhammad bin tughlaq and by the second time right as every every house has started minting you know copper coins at their homes so this was the reason people start calling him foolish king right start calling him foolish tughlaq so from because of these two centric decisions that has actually taken by you know uh, for the first time in the history of india you know by the kings that the shifting of the capital and you know by uh, you know completely uh, you know uh, uh, re replacing the money uh, replacing the money that was copper with the gold and silver right so because of these two eccentric and yet iconic decisions right so muhammad bin tughlaq is still remembered you know as the, an eccentric fellow as a man who has a complex personality right so he cannot be totally denied on the ground of that uh, that he 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 was an eccentric fellow but on the other hand when we talk about you know the reign he had right so the kind of you know the religious tolerance his ideas about secularism how how good he was managing managing the managing the country you know so there will be very less voids and there will be very less you know communal disharmony during the you know his reign so that was also an example that he was not at all only you know he was not at all completely a person we simply disregard as someone who is foolish and you know, negligent but on the other hand he, he was actually a very complex personality like most of our leaders are so you know so uh, one thing that you know the very basic idea that you know how a man is flawed you know a, a man nobody is perfect right so whenever we think about our leaders so we should keep the same thing in our mind right so so that every human being is flawed right so same goes i really want to quote dr b r ambedkar's word that how he was talking about right how devotion in the religion leads to the faith but on the other hand he said that devotion in the politics it, it it will ultimately lead to the dictatorship right so same happens here that you know by quoting the example of muhammad bin tughlaq uh grish kanad was actually you know criticizing indian government and especially the ideas of the you know jawaharlal nehru the futuristic ideas of jawaharlal nehru that was you know in 1960s you know congress was actually you know carrying the uh, you know just the uh, nehru nehrus and mahatma gandhi's ideals and they were not at all aware of the contemporary issues for example when we were talking about shifting of the capital right so he took the decision but he was not aware of the consequences that how how people will shift you know how, how how much pain how much displacement how much dislocation you know the people will suffer in, in such kind of criticism so same way grish kanad was actually putting forth the idea that that we should not be you know too much devoted uh, to to this cult worship too much not you know but you know it very well if you you know studied uh, political science that how you know when we were talking about indian political system we have the phrase of charismatic personality right so here you know in india we have the cult of charismatic personality here we are not judging political parties policies actions you know? so here we we believe in the cult of 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 personality worship right so this was the reason that every political party has one you know famous face and and they encash that that famous face for 10 15 or 20 years right so for example congress is still encashing on the image of mahatma gandhi jawaharlal nehru and further indira gandhi as well right so same goes with you know bjp and with the aap and with the other parties they have the, this particular face right for whom they are encashing it you know to 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 manipulate the the you know innocent people of the india right the, and but the same way gurish kanad was actually you know talking about these two particular example and quoting the you know few uh, details of the eccentricities of the muhammad bin tughlaq in order to refrain people from this you know this uh, uh, personality worship you know of refrain people you know to create awareness among the people that they should not involve in any kind of uh, you know uh, this 
cult of personality worship and they should not be you know they should really have a nerve to you know criticize the government they really need to have the you know a nerve to uh, look upon the plans in a in, in, in a critical way rather than just being you know be, becoming the uh, they're just being devoted to one party and rather just just believing that they have high ideals and their futuristic plans will work for them you know let's say in five years or ten years or in 15 or 20 years right so in this way he was actually quoting the example of Muhammad bin Tughlaq to, to, to put you know a, a light on the contemporary politics right so the, even you know his, his play is very much you know relevant in nowadays as well when we talk about 10 years back or even today's and even we talk about you know the world politics that how such kind of eccentric decisions has taken by every single leader right so no not one leader who, who is actually you know who is left uh, uh, behind in this race of, of, of proving himself to be, you know, a divine aspiration that he is actually, uh, you know, a, a, a king or a leader or a man of masses and how, you know, they are continuously, you know, working for the for, for the for the welfare of the people. But on the other hand, their eccentricities will ultimately put the common people into the trouble. Right. So this is what happened during the two decisions. And, and not even, you know, the, the, there will be much rise of the men's, but on the other hand, there will be definitely going to be rise of the corruption. People will start fighting with each other. So the whole market, right? So so that time we have the share market, the whole market of that time, you know, during the Muhammad bin Tughlaq, the whole market of the ASICs, right? It completely turned into a chaotic fish market that the people are actually, you know, they are actually fighting with each other. They were manipulating, speculating about the future, which is, you know, which is quite uncertain, right? So the whole, you know, the whole idea the whole great ideals, the two great you know decisions that was taken by you know the great king of the Delhi Sultanate that was Muhammad bin Tughlaq and how you know it, it completely turned into an you know anarchic kingdom right so he though he really wants to unite people he really wants to emerge to be a man of divine inspiration but on the other hand he actually you know leads to the anarchy it was total you know, mismanagement it was total you know the disorder in, in his kingdom because of these two things and people have started losing faith in the in the king and they have even started you know calling him as his he was actually you know he was actually a man of eccentricities he's actually a man of opposites and he's actually a foolish king right and uh, even when we talk about you know Aziz and Azam, so basically there was a small plot. And but before talking about Aziz and Azam, I would also like to you know quote the example of Sheikh Imamuddin. And there were a lot of people, right? When we were talking about you know Muhammad bin Tughlaq's first, uh, you know the family, uh, family and you know familial life. So we have already had the you know the word of that how he, he himself got you know he, he himself killed the his father and his brother. But on the other hand, uh, though he was very much close to her stepmother right so her stepmother and she she they share a quite congenial uh, relationship and it, it was uh, her mother uh, his mother sorry his mother was actually very much worried about you know Tughlaq. she was constantly worried about Tughlaq that that uh, in what direction he was actually leading and the kind of you know, anarchy that state was all, all, all totally turned into and he and she even criticized you know, Tughlaq's idea of that what was the you know, what was the uh, value you know that he was actually you know giving to copper coins and and there was complete anarchy in the state and people are actually you know minting the money in in, in every household and there 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 was total mismanagement and disorder in the economy and and what will be the future consequences so 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 definitely like an elder like a like an advisor like a courtier you know his stepmother was. You know, uh, constantly uh, trying to put sense in the you know, in, in the mind of the Tughlaq. But on the other hand, we know it very well that kind of a complex personality Tughlaq is. Uh, if a man, if, if when we're talking about the Muhammad bin Tughlaq, if a man can kill his father and his brother for the throne, what do you think that uh, will he believe uh, his stepmother? Right. So, so, so the whole personality of the Tughlaq is very much complex and, you know, he's actually, you know, a mixture of uh, a lot of, you know, he was actually a bundle of contradictions. Right. So this was the reason that he was the one that he is you know, not going to you know, trust anyone. So same happens when there was one incident in the play that they, that was there was a mention of Sheikh Imamuddin. Right. So Sheikh Imamuddin was uh, one of the courtiers. But on the other hand, Sheikh Imamuddin was very much jealous of the king. And you know it very well when we talk about, you know, the Mughal Empire, that how, you know, there were a lot of conspiracies that was going on in the court, right, between the king's brothers and fathers. And, you know, a you, you, lot of people were involved in such kind of a conspiracies and that too on the name of 
throne, right? And uh, this was the reason that you know Sheikh Imamuddin, Sheikh Imamuddin really wants to you know kill the king. Sheikh Imamuddin was constant in the conspiracies with the two of the courtiers, and you know by uh, uh, getting into you know getting into uh, them into their their trust, and they really want to replace the king. They really want to replace the king by killing the Tughlaq. But on the other hand, Tughlaq, there were a lot of people who were warning Tughlaq against the idea. But Tughlaq was you know Tughlaq was not at all. Uh, um, affected by the whole idea so there was a thing that uh, there was an army that that uh, there were a few people that they tried to you know kill the muhammad bin tughlaq but on the other hand uh, muhammad bin tughlaq deliberately right he asked sheikh imamuddin to dress uh, as a king and you know just he ordered him to you know go and meet the people but in the end that it was actually you know it was not about uh, the people you know who were actually the guests or a, a, anybody who were the well wishers it was actually the enemies of the muhammad bin tughlaq from some other state and you know they killed sheikh imamuddin under this impression that they are actually killing the tughlaq so this is how you know the muhammad bin tughlaq there is a story that how he got rid of his enemies by his by his cruel tricks right so he he got sheikh imamuddin killed you know by dressing uh, him uh, as you know, as Tughlaq. So this is how he get rid of his enemy. So yeah, was, is it a real incident? Yes, this was a real incident. When you read the story of Muhammad and Tughlaq, were, even when you read of the story of the, any of the Mughal, you know, any of the Mughal rulers, there were so many conspiracies that was going on within. Yes. On the other hand, when we talk about the Muhammad and Tughlaq, the Muhammad and Tughlaq shares a very you know uh, close relationship with the historian Barani. Right. So if you remember Barani, so even even same, you know, with the when we talk about any of the, you know, uh, uh, Mughal, uh, Mughal king. Right. So they have a very close connections with the you know, historians. So even Barani was very much you know close to Tughlaq. So this was the reason that because of the Barani, we got to know about so many historical details of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Right. And uh, and one thing more that uh, deliberately they want to strike a connection with the historians. They, they keep the historians, you know, uh, uh, you know particularly close to them because they really want to shine in the history. So this was the reason that when, when we talk about, you know, when we talk about the Mughal history, we, we got to know uh, different accounts of, of, of these, these Mughal kings that how, you know, they emerge to be the most powerful people in the world because they share the close connections with historians. And you have already read, I believe, New Historicism, right? So there we got to know that how, you know, the main purpose of the historian is to build a grand narrative, right? So that, that is going to be the meta narrative, the grand narrative, because the historian wants to, you know, gloss over the rough, rough edges, right? And he really wants to give you an overall account, right? He really wants to give you a, a overall exaggerated and wholesome account, right? And in, in, in giving you the wholesome account and giving you the a, a plate, you know, a plattered. Uh, uh, a plaited history, right? He he gloss over the edges, so there will be few details that that he probably you know he, he probably uh, you know glossed over the rough edges. Sometimes he, he curtailed them, and sometimes he manipulated few facts in order to give you the wholesome history. So this was the reason that we were studying new historicism. That how you know there were personal anecdotes, there were autobiographical accounts, there because of the word of mouth, because of you know these small accounts, because of the folk tales, folklores, and there were so many messages, unhidden messages that. They travel by the time and you know, from one generation to another and these these things sometimes contain the truth which the historian was actually hiding from the people right and you got to know the new aspects of the history right so that was actually talking about the historicity of the text or the you know uh, uh, and how the you know text has the historicity right so the same thing you know we will be talking about uh, we to be discuss that thing in the new historicism so same way we, when we talk about the muhammad bin tughlaq maybe he has committed a lot of heinous crimes and maybe there were a lot of you know, different layers of his personality and different layers of different dimensions of his personality but because he has a close connection with the barani we, we got to know what Muhammad bin Tughlaq and what really Barani wants to portray in front of the world, right? So we, we got to know a wholesome account of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, right? Because these kind of, we could say, these kind of eccentric uh, plans, what he was actually you know, talking about shifting off the capital and even, you know, changing the currency to copper and replacing it, you know, replacing gold and silver. So by that time, they, they, they according to them, they, they were the iconic decisions, right? They were the great visions they had in the in their mind for the betterment of the people. But they, they, they never know that what would be the predicament, what would be the consequences, and how people will look at the history, how will people have, how people will look at their political image and political strategy after twenty years or thirty years, right? The same thing that you know, we were actually criticizing, you know, the Nehruvian idea, the the Congress. 
openly nowadays when we when we look back that how you know how they started well in 1947 and we, and to what progress growth and development we will be talking right uh, under their regime right so the same way though because of the historical connections right barani had even barani uh, more of the time he was actually you know, acted as an advisor as well same goes with you know uh, his stepmother so so he has a very close connection with barani and barani was continuously advising him that he really should take care of his health right and on the other hand and we will be talking about aziz azam aziz azam so aziz was actually a thief right aziz was uh, uh, was actually a thief uh, was actually a, you know, a, a petty thief and he, he was actually presented in the court of uh, Tughlaq for a small petty crime but on the other hand Aziz was, Aziz as Azam so Aziz as Azam they were petty thieves but they were very you know they were a kind of as I have already told you Shakespeare and Crown and on the other hand you can even read them as the common people right so common people you know it very well that how you know in the policies in the formulation of the policies there will be a lot of people who, who bend the laws who who get through the way the law and they get their things done right so for example whenever there will be the mon demonetization so pay people earn a lot of money right the bankers they they, they earn, earn a lot of money uh, from the way of you know from the demonetization right so the price was 400 for a 500 rupee note right so they were actually you know earning 100 just by sitting in the back right so there this and same goes with the, a lot of you know you want to quote the example during the lockdown as well right so there were people who were actually selling things you know uh the, they were selling things for 100 those who were actually you know like the real price was 50 or 80 right so aziz's azam are the same you know so deliberately grish kanad used them as a device that there are the people that right? there these are these tricksters these are these imposters right the the, the common you know petty people though those who actually you know got advantage of the situation and they get their things done so first of all there was the mention of the aziz that how aziz uh, you know he, he was presented in the court of the tughlaq but what happened that uh, he he knew that how tughlaq was a secular or a secularist right and tughlaq has a great de uh, uh, devotion and faith for the hindus and this was the reason that he got him uh, disguised as vishnu prasad as a hindu brahmin right and on the other hand he filed a complaint again in the court of the Tughlaq that it was a, a it was a wrong charge and it was the state it was the you know it it, it, it was the court those who are actually you know they were actually you know acquiring his land right so this was the reason that he got free from the uh, uh, from the uh, from the Tughlaq right so this shows that that how you know religious tolerance uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq has that time right so so he was not even you know he was not treating Hindus just simply like they are the criminals right had it been some other leader right uh, sorry had it been some other king right those who try to criminalize the uh, you know other communities other caste and other religions so this was the reason that this was a famous you know famous uh, uh, you could say the famous interpretation of that time that that uh, Muhammad bin Tughlaq was really you know a, a man of uh, uh, tolerance and then uh, on the other hand when they got to know that that the, what kind of you know the state they have such what kind of you know the you could say uh, the, the kind of anarchy that was going on in the in, in, in the country because of this this copper coins right so Aziz and Azam they planned right so 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 they plan to disguise as a gyasudin Ab uh, abdas right so their gyasudin abdas was them who planned who planned aziz and azam right so aziz both. And azam, both right so they both were the petty thieves they really want to emerge right so they really want to emerge and rise up and they want to you know they want to plan something big right and yes. Muhammad of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, as they were aware of the you know foolishness of the king so they yes. both of them they, they planned you know to be the chief guest so there was you know it very well there were here and there uh, you know, any time around the corner there were announcements that some guest of the honor was coming to meet the king so same there was a announcement in the public that Ghyasuddin of Sadin, uh, Ghyasuddin was actually arriving to meet the people right and Muhammad bin Tughlaq was actually you know, meeting uh, with the king and you know such kind of a meetings were very common for, for the extension of the you know uh, of their territories right so they give each other gifts and sometimes you know they you know they, they, they 
take each other's daughter and 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 they have and their marriages were more or less of the political alliances right and then that time you know there was also a kind of a announcement now the prayer from the bans will be lifted right so the lumas was actually banned the prayer prayer was actually banned so they were saying that when we yasu then will come they will lift the ban from the prayers and it is going to be the old order right so old order but on the other hand people will be you know they were actually you know living in acute poverty there were poverty there were migration exodus there was a you know, complete chaos in the uh, a, 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 in the kingdom so this was the reason that people were not at all interested in gyasudin and uh, and in the prayer right because their basic necessities because they were dying of the hunger so they were not at all interested uh, in the big you know oh, oh show of the gyasudin right and the life of the common man was totally devastated but uh, tugluk was very much happy and preparing for the you know welcome of the gyasudin and it was aziz right so aziz aziz appears and whenever you know when gyasudin was approaching the door to meet the uh, tugluk he murders gyasudin and on the other hand he disguised himself as Gyasudin, right? So this was the plan of Aziz and Azam, right? That they will kill Gyasudin and they will disguise themselves as Gyasudin. So a kind of imposter, the the idea of disguise was very much, you know, prominent when you talk about you know the political schemes and parties, right? So the, they and disguises himself as a Gyasudin and uh, with the motive, right, to to manipulate the king, to 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 dupe the king. So Aziz manages to this de de uh, deceive the Tughlaq with his new identity, right, and uh, and later. Uh, Aziz Azam is uh, somehow murdered and his true identity is re released uh, to uh, Tughlaq, right? So, and when he got to know that how, you know, uh, in the end, when he got to know that how the very two petty thieves, that, that Aziz, uh, you know, tells him everything, that how they have done everything just to cheat him. And in, in the end, the relevation of the facts, right? It, it, the, you know, so what do you think that when Muhammad bin Tughlaq will get to know that how these two people, Aziz and Azam, trying to manipulate uh, him, manipulate the king and how they murdered Ghiasuddin and how they really want to emerge uh, and uh, you know do something good and big in their life. So what do you think that what will be the decision of the Tughlaq and the court of the king? He, he must be very angry and according, uh, and according uh, to his temperament maybe he killed them he he executed them on the other hand he was very much impressed when he got to know that how these yeah. simple two fellows right so this was the reason that he fit to be the foolish king right uh he, he, he was very much impressed by the tricks uh, you know trickery uh, of the aziz, uh, aziz because azam was somehow murdered and you know somehow was revealed by the courtiers when they got to know that it was uh, it was not the real Gyasudin and by the you know followers of the Gyasudin. So this, there was just Aziz left, right? So on the other hand, he got impressed and even he gave some position to uh, Aziz in the in, in the court of uh, you know uh, his kingdom, right? Because uh, one thing that was very much clear that you know you could see that uh, the kind of trickery that Aziz has used to rise to such kind of a status. Yeah. The same trickery, uh, with same trickery, he has killed his father and brother, right? So there were no difference between Aziz and with the Tughlaq as well, right? So, so the, the the you know they were both sailing on the same same plane when it comes to you know trickery and when it comes to murder and you know all about the you know, intrigue, rate, you know conspiracies they will be having to rise to the status of you know uh, the king or to rise you know or, or, or to make something big in their life right so this was the reason that he got you know impressed by aziz and he gave some position right? on the other hand second uh, thing is that uh you know uh Tugluk was very wicked and uh, cruel and in, in, in this sense because he knows that very well that that if you know uh if he, he aziz will be here then then there will be no people who will be trying to you know trick the king right because he sees that the, his own people his own relatives because he himself killed you know uh, his, his father and his brother so this was the reason that he was under the impression that that his, his relatives are more dangerous to him than the aziz right so this is the reason as well that he, he gave a position to the aziz right by being impressed by the king right so in the last uh, of the you know, scene there was a soliloquy that when he was talking about red right, he has gone he has gone to sleep and and he was actually you know talking to you know his historian and uh, barani and he was talking that how he was suffering from Omnia. in the end of this in, in the very end of the play when you got to know that he was actually you know he, he he was not just a man of opposites he was just not a man of you know a, a 
complex personality a centric fellow but on the other hand he, he was actually you know, suffering from mental agony as well right because a person who is involved in so many tricks so many conspiracies such a kind of centric decisions he is taking so definitely that man is insane from within not a sane man right uh, and, and somebody and, and and on the other hand we also get this uh, message that somebody who will be so much driven on power and authority that, that he can went to any extent to get anyone killed he was so much interested in bloodshed right so so this will be the reason that he turned insane right so in the end he was you know talking to barani and he was you know saying that that how he is suffering from insomnia he said that there were so many so many months that months that he haven't slept yet right so he said that i am not even having the wink of you know, wink of the eye that that, that, that i am not able to sleep i'm i'm not even you know able to have peace so this was the reason that sleep is very much necessary in order to keep someone sane right and 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 say in not even sleep right the appropriate amount of sleep right so eight hours sleep is must for a man to you know keep his senses uh, you know uh, uh, active and uh, right uh, in the sense but on the other hand just think about a man right who hasn't sleep uh, slept uh, you know for, from so many uh, months so he was actually suffering from insomnia and this was the reason that because you know he was taking in a centric decisions because he was only prone, prone to madness he was prone to you know insanity so in this way in in the end we got to know that that how he got in how he went insane how he went mad in the end right and he was not even you know he was not even uh, a foolish king but on the other hand he was an eccentric fellow so same you know the kind of you know connotations of girish kanar trying to you know trying to uh, you know connect uh, with, with the political leaders that 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 they all are insane right because they were so much driven with the idea of power and authority and and they they they, they do not look for the interest of the common people and in the end you know while driving so and riding on the riding high on the idea of power and authority ultimately they will be left with nothing they are prone to make such kind of eccentric decisions they are prone to make such kind of impractical and illogical policies and in the end they will be just you know they 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 went mad in the end right so this is all about the future you know of the political leaders who are you know who are you know who are in some way said to be the complex personality said to be you know the the form, you know formulators of the the policies the illogical and impractical policies but on the other hand the the, the the end will be that 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 they will in the end they will they will go on mad you know uh, the same way uh, the condition of the tughlaq going mad is also you know a kind of a disillusionment you know he was hinting at the the disillusion can be of the both side right so it can be the disillusionment of the political leader of the king as well and it is same goes with the disillusionment of the people as well right so even you know even investing so much in the, right so even investing so much in the policies you know in policies and impractical uh, impractical practices and you know illogical policies and uh, decisions of the political leaders right and and blindly you know blindly uh, devoting uh, themselves to it and blindly advocating them and without even you know and uh, and and complete turning a blind eye and not not you know thinking from the mind and not using the uh, logic and rational the people will soon get disillusioned right so they will also suffer from sanity and they will also get disillusioned by the whole idea of the king and of the leader so this way he was actually you know talking about the the too much idealism of the nehru that how you know the after the independence the you know when the party was formed and then they talk about independent democratic country they were talking about the modern india that how we will be the ruler of ourselves and this was the reason that you know uh, they were asserting the biggest democracy in the world that how india has you know emerged as the biggest democracy and uh, they will be talking with the too much of idealism but all the plans he was talking about till the till the date of 1960 that all the plans of the nehruvian era the all the plans that were you know carry forward under the uh, under the legacy of gandhi and jawahar nehru how 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 they went you know all uh, how they turned out to be illogical Uh, illogical policies and how they are not doing good much to the people right and on the other hand by the time of 1964 you know the play was written 1960 you know we, if if you go back we'll realize the kind of relationship we keep on you know sharing with the pakistan there were constant threats of wars there were so many you know and and, and there were there were so many tensions going on between indo pak relationships there were so many hardships that was actually going on in 1960s so the too much idealistic plans of nehru you know complete 
fell flat uh, you know uh, when we talk about the the uh, modern india right so this was the reason that girish karnad was actually you know uh, was actually making people aware that we should not be devoted to one leader and 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 any kind of a party any kind of a party when it comes to the you know uh, polit politics so we should not be devoted to too much to it and on the other hand too much of idealism right and the too much of idealism of a political party is just to you know build their own their own power just to assert their own authority over the people just to build the their own image and you know the, the sufferers will be definitely will be the poor simple people like we have in the reign of you know mohammed bin tughlaq right and and how all the leaders right they have this tughlaq you know inside them right so there is a tughlaq inside in, 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 in you know in their in, in their mind in their heart right so so there is there is a centricity in all the all the leaders right so every man is flawed so we should you know if refrain ourselves from you know getting too much involved into the idealism uh, and uh, rather we we should you know critically critically analyze the policies and analyze the actions of the uh, of of our of our lead of our leaders and of our you know of of the kings that we have from history and we should learn from the history right he was quoting the example of mohammed bin tughlaq and you know and and giving the commentary on the contemporary politics of 1960 so it was like he was actually you know uh, giving the message that we should really learn from our past actions so we should really learn from our history in order to you know build uh, our future and and when we think about our future and and in order to even to ascertain our future right so we really need to learn from the history right i hope this much is clear shushmita do you have any questions from tughlaq uh, no ma'am okay so shall we start with the next story yes have you read anything uh, no ma'am i have not not read these two stories okay first of all we'll be starting with the empty chest by indra goswami so these are very short you know short uh, uh, short and precise stories but on the other hand you know both the writers they have they have written the, these two stories with great clarity and precision right so and, and we were talking about completely different themes today right so the first story that was of the empty chest by indira goswami right so it was actually set in the in the uh, uh, in the fringes of assam right so basically he was talking about an assami woman right and we have two three characters very less characters in the short story as i have already told you that you know we have the concise we have very concise and precise short stories right the empty chest by indra goswami so here we have uh, two three characters so the protagonist is uh, the the female that is tara doi right so tara doi tara the whole story you know centers around the life of the tara doi and his empty chest right uh, so empty chest is a kind of you know uh, so chest is uh, uh, so basically uh, first of all we'll talk about tara doi so tara doi was actually belongs to a community uh, those who are you know those who are uh, doing the cremation have you watched the movie masan shushmita yes ma'am right so you so you must be aware of the community that uh, the the hero was from that they were cremating the body, dead bodies i hope uh, you are able to get my question shushmita yes ma'am right so so the protagonist was actually cremating the bodies right so basically they were from dome community but on the other hand here there was no mention of the community to which tara doi belongs to right so basically they were living in the cremation ground they were living in the crematorium on the fringes of the crematorium and the basic you know the basic uh, you know activity you could say the basic profession of uh, the community of the tara doi was must be you know the you know the cremating the dead body and and then uh, you know uh, and, and you know it very well then then during the cremation people people uh, throw a lot of things right uh, on the dead and on the other hand a lot of precious things of the dead will be you know cremating uh, will be burnt during the cremation ceremony and on the other hand uh, there will be uh, and then these people will survive on the you know will be survive on the arms that were given to them uh, after the cremation right and uh, and if you uh, aware of the fact then you know the big Uh, the big rich people right so the so, so the rich and wealthy man you know when they were you know they, when they were taken to the crematorium right so they were be they will be you know they will be taking the dead body in the big big chests right so there will be this big big boxes this big big wooden boxes right so in which they will be actually you know uh, having the dead body 
uh, of the of the rich man right and, and and from the size of the wooden box so this is what is the chest right so from the right uh, from the size of the wooden box and 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 that talks about the lavishness you know the wealth of the man right so the, the how wealthy how powerful man that was right so basically that was the story of the wooden chest right so tara doi so tara doi must be having a kind of this chest right so this, this big wooden box uh, where a dead body was carried right so he must be he must have had the dead body we know it very well that you know the, you cannot you know burn the body in the chest you have to put the chest you have to put the wooden box aside and you have to you know you know burn the dead body uh, 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 on on the big logs of the wood right so the same chest we will be talking about right in indra's god swami and then we have the taradoi so first of all our character is taradoi so taradoi was actually living with his three children and taradoi is a married woman but on the other hand uh, as he belongs to a lower caste woman right so you know some someone who is living on the fringes right someone who is actually you know surviving on the on on on, on the on the you could say on the leftovers of the of, of the dead bodies and of the of, of, of the possessions of you know whatever will be given to them by the relatives of the dead body right the, the dead people right so we have tara doi and on the other hand we have his uh, her, her husband right that is heber so heber as usual as he belongs to you know a lower caste so he was actually a criminal and he was put in jail right and tara doi was actually living with her three children in the in the on the fringes of the crematorium right so they were actually you know living near the crematorium right but on the other hand there were two more important people so first is someshwar so someshwar is tara doi's brother and then we have uh, sarubopa right so sarabopa sarubopa is the love interest of tara doi right so the whole story revolves around tara doi tara doi's love interest tara doi's love love for sarubopa and then uh, and how you know what will be the reactions of you know the society and and the relation with the empty chest right so so when we were talking about the story so it was set in assam right and uh, as we have already discussed that how taradoi was actually you know living on the fringes of the crematorium you know cremation ground he was actually you know living on the fringes of the uh, you know uh, cremation ground under the shrine of the kamakya so here we have the protagonist taradoi and he lives with his children right and they ha they have a very small family right and she was managing you know she was managing and must be doing some petty jobs in order to survive and in order to you know feed her children as uh, her husband has been taken to jail and uh, we got to know you know roughly from the you know from from the few of the voices that how she has been married for 10 years and you know life was not at all same uh, for her and uh, you know and her lift and he just have she just have a little family and who was just you know uh, living over the leftovers and you know all the prospectus of the cremation ground right so whatever you know, cremation ceremony was held whatever you know the money they get got from the you know cremation ceremony they were actually you know managing their house and their houses there was not at all a proper house they were living in a complete shacks they were living in huts who were leaking there were holes and gaps right so they were actually living in a very a uh, very poor condition right and and we slowly came to understand that you know how that you know the whole story of tara doi right so so we got to know when you know we we talk think about that how from the story when you read the story we got to know that how tara doi was actually you know he was sleeping in this chest right the wooden box which i am talking about right so he was she was actually sleeping in the wooden chest right and uh, she was actually you know combing the hair and uh, you know and she was even put in, and she was even she was sleeping in that chest by putting her wedding blouse right so so at the very first glance when when we read about the story we'll get to know that how this chest this wooden chest right was very much uh, uh, was was very much precious to tara doi right we'll got to know uh, later that what was the significance of that uh, empty chest so it was said that that she was you know laying very cozily inside the chest she she used to sleep there right while her children were sleeping on the bed she, the, the children were sleeping you know uh, uh, on on the muddy bed and somewhere else so she was cozily sleeping or snuggling in that 
uh, wooden chest, right, inside the chest, and how you know the, there was a whole description that how the empty chest was, you know, it, it has the smell of Taradoi's hair, the flowers she was having, and the vermilion, right? So, so this the chest it was carrying the scent of you know the carrying the scent of the Taradoi, right? And as I have already told you, and she was even wearing the wedding blouse, right? The only thing that is left in uh, in in her possession, you know. Uh, of, of, of her wedding trousseau, right? So it was the wedding blouse that she was wearing, and she was, you know, cozily sleeping in the empty chest, and she was, you know, thinking about. And then we got to know there came Someshwar, right? So Someshwar was was Tara Doi's brother, and Someshwar was Someshwar was actually a police officer, right? A police officer. Uh, and when he got to meet, uh, got to you know uh, meet. Uh, Tara Doi uh, in her house. So he he, he was uh, you know at first sight uh, while you know looking at the chest and how Tara Doi was actually coming out of the chest and the chest was still there. So at one point of a time, uh, you know Someshwar was shocked, right? Shocked beyond uh, the belief and thought, right? And on the other hand, the children, you know, they were so much of chaos. There was so much of you know uh, loud you know hue and cries from the children because they were very much you know enthusiastic about seeing you know her, her mama right uh, the brother of Tara Doi so they were very much happy that the the brother you know the brother of Tara Doi uh, uh, that their mama w w might be bringing something for you know something for the kids right so they were all you know uh, around the Someshwar and uh, but on the other hand Tara Doi was you know for a, one moment or two she was actually silent so Someshwar was the one who actually you know started the conversation and where we got to know the story of the empty chest right so so Meshwar was the one who asked that it was the same chest right the same wooden box the same chest that who has the body of Sarubopa right because so Meshwar said that I clearly remember that uh, you know when uh, they they got hold of the body dead body of the Sarubopa and they put the dead body of the Sarubopa in the in this wooden chest, right? So, Someshwar here, you know, uh, Someshwar here learned that how, you know, uh, how his sister is still attached to Saru Bopa and, and, and to the conversation between Someshwar and, you know, Tara Doi. We got to know about Tara Doi's past, that how Tara Doi was actually, you know, actually Tara Doi was actually, you know, working as a house help, right? She was actually working as a maid in the house of the Thakurs when her husband was in jail, right? And there, while, you know, working as a maid at a house help, there she fell in love with Thakur's son, that was Saru Bopa, right? So she fell in love with, the, you know, Saru Bopa and, and they both want to marry with each other, according to the, you know, the, uh, according to the, uh, interpretation and according to the you know uh, thoughts of Sara Doi, Tara Doi sorry so they they both want to get married they, they want to marry each other but uh, the very problem is that right so very problem is definitely the caste right so there will be obviously there will be opposition from the from the family especially from the you know Saru Bopa because they will not you know approve such kind of a relationship because first thing that you know Tara Doi belongs to a low caste, right? And and that that we 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 talked about the construction that and then how they were atishudras, right? They were panchamas, they were atishudras, they were untouchable, right? So she was an untouchable, and Sarubopa belongs to an upper caste, right? So and uh, he, he you know, they they were actually a, th a family of Thakurs. So such act was completely you know completely unacceptable in their family. And uh, second thing, you know uh, how. Uh, Tara Doi. Tara Doi was actually a woman, right? A woman, especially a married woman, and especially a woman, you know, whose husband is a criminal, and she is already has three children. So such, so you know, such a relationship was not at all acceptable in by the mainstream society, right? So it was beyond our, you know, comprehension that how could love be possible in these two people, right? So this was the reason that so Meshwar, right? So but on the other hand, you know, Tara Doi was living under the impression, you know, he the way he was still sleeping in the chest you know the wooden chest where you know th that has the dead body of the, the saru bopa that 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 highlights that how she was truly in love with the saru bopa and you know and and she was truly shaken 
by the death of the Sarugopa and she really wants to spend her life with Sarugopa happily but but the dreams couldn't realize because of the you know because of the societal patterns because of the you know the caste mindset and because of uh, so many things you know the, the the kind of society we are living in and and by the rules imposed by the mainstream society right but on the other hand Someshwar is very much practical you know and as a brother he was consoling uh, the Taradoi that he was saying that the gone are the days when Thakur marries uh, marry us right so he was actually you know putting sense in the mind of the Taradoi that gone are the days you know the, the when Thakurs were were ready to marry us right so there were no days then then Thakurs will not marry marry you right so and uh, but on the other hand uh, Taradoi was you know Taradoi was giving the argument that how Saru Bopa was actually you know actually in love with her, her and how he he hadn't married for you know so many years so she was quoting the you know the time that how he was not the how he was not at all married for 12 years because he really wants to you know marry Taradoi but uh, Someshwar you know as a brother he he really he really doesn't want to hurt the sentiments of uh, of her, his sister right but in the end when he saw that you know the that how her sister was still living in the you know it was still living under a delusion how she was under you know, still living under the sham of a of, of a false love and how you know she was actually living under the false hope right so that time sumeshwar you know very angrily you know she threw the wedding cards uh, at the face of the Taradori, that that there were the wedding cards of Saru Bhopa, that he, he was not at all a bachelor, he was not at all a warrior for you, he was not at all a bachelor, right? But on the other hand, he was on his way to marry someone else, right? And but in the end, by you know, while he was returning uh, to, to uh, his home and he met with an accident and because of that you know his, his dead body was you know his dead body was carried in this wooden box and his this wooden chest and and uh, that how you know the young he still remembers that you know the young blood the young fresh blood that was actually in the hands of the Sumeshwar and he was giving the example that I cannot forget this a wooden box i cannot forget forget this wooden chest right uh, in which i carried the body of the saru bopa but uh, you know and uh, and uh, you were saying that that how the person you know he he, he was not ready to marry but on the other hand uh, he showed the wedding cards and threw through the wedding cards on the face of the taradoi and after you know giving as the children were around the you know uh, Taradoi's brother so he showed some money to the children and he just went away right so this was just a very small incident a kind of you know a very small incident a small, a small conversation between Taradoi and Someshwar where we got to know the whole plot plot about the story right so this was the chest right so there we got to know the you know the story of the chest that why the chest was so much important because the chest carried the dead body of the Saru Bopa whom Taradoi loved so much but because of so many things, because of the so many restrictions of the mainstream society, as we can say, the mainstream upper caste society, there were so many restrictions, they couldn't marry. And in the end, Tara Rui got to know that how, you know, it was not because of the society, even she got cheated, uh, you know, uh, she felt cheated at time that, that how, you know, even after the death of the Saru Bopa, she was, you know, she was... Uh, loving the chest so much, you know, she really wants to feel the body of Saru Bopa. She really wants to, you know, the, the she really wants to feel the warmth of the uh, Saru Bopa, and and the love was still intact, you know, uh, in the in the heart of Tara Doi. But when she got to know that how, you know, the man was ready to marry someone else, and you know, the wedding card, and she she took the wedding card, and and she asserted that that how it was really the wedding card of Saru Bopa, and how you know he was ready to marry some other woman so the whole you know the whole dreams of Tara Doi, you know it, it, it just crashed it, 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 it the whole you know the big hopes and dreams of Tara Doi just, just just you know crashed in, in one single moment and in the end you know in the end of the story we got to know that how you know in the end that the chest the chest that was so much you know precious for uh, her that was the favorite of you know Taradoi is one of the one of the possessions and the only thing that connects Taradoi with the Saru Bopa, the only thing where she you know she, where she can openly assert her you know assert her desires you know to the to Saru Bopa and she can feel uh, the you know the, the Saru Bopa's warmth body and she can visualize the happy you know uh, a happy happy love happy world of Taradoi and Saru, Saru Bopa by sleeping in that chest 
that you know the whole thing you know just it just evaporated it just vanished it just crashed in in a few moments and in the end uh, she just set the chest on fire right so when she got to know that how she was you know the love was uh, you know not so much uh, at the part of sarubopa so in the end she set the chest on fire right so this is how the chest that was so much familiar you know so much precious for the uh, for a woman for the protagonist taru taradoi in the end it became empty chest right because uh, uh, there was nothing in the chest as sarubopa right so this empty the the adjective empty refers to the empty love or you could say the pretended feelings of sarubopa or it can be the you know the gone love the lost love the love lost between you know uh, sarubopa and taradoi when you know sarubopa you know took the decision of marrying someone else right so this was the reason that she set the chest on fire right so because you know there was a crushing blow uh, at, at the part of tara do when she got to know that that how you know that the truth the reality she faced in the end and the reality that that changed the mind you know, changed the mind of the tara do that uh, and uh, you know the literal death that it it, it was not the literal death that uh, you know the literal death of you know, sarubopa that that the chest keep on you know reminding the taradoi but on the other hand by talking about the empty chest it was also the death of the love of taradoi right so this is how you know we got to know the empty chest when the chest was you know set on fire by taradoi as there was no love left between the you know between taradoi and sarubopa she she got the bitter reality and and in the end you know the literal death of you know, it was not just the literal death it was just the death of the feelings of the taradoi as well and we got to know about the mainstream society that how you know the mainstream society keep on you know you know keeps on killing uh, a lot of taradoi's right so first of all when we talk about taradoi so it will tell you know, just depicts the sufferings of the taradoi as we have already you know discussed in the story that how she was a lower caste woman so the marriage was you know totally out of context the marriage was totally unacceptable and second thing that how she was you know she she will be you know seen under the lenses of a married woman and uh, her how her husband is a, a criminal and how she already had three children and she cannot be married to a bachelor right so we live in such kind of a judgmental society right and it would not just depicts the sufferings the plight of the taradoi but on the other hand the relationship right taradoi shares with the empty chest right the shares with the chest that carries the that carry the dead body of the sarubopa it also you know it also depicts the desires of the taradoi right so the the desires the 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 very natural and basic desires that we have talked about you know by talking about the relationship of pranesha charya and chandri right when we talk about the same desires right so so it was all about you know the desires of the female right so the desires of the female were were were, were the least concern of the patriarchal society were the least concern of for the man right so the so the these desires were neglected you know snubbed or or you could say shunned uh, on on the name of something which is a you know sinful activity you know or or, or on the name of immorality or adultery so so it also depicts about the desires of the taradoi that how she really wants to have peace she really wants to enjoy she really wants to you know assert she really wants to show her desires you know by by snuggling in the chest by by feeling the warmth of the dead body even you know thinking about the the chest was having the body of the sarubopa but on the other hand you know uh, in the end she got to know that that chest uh, is you know it, it, it doesn't just contain the dead body of the sarubopa but on the other hand you know e even his heart was not there uh, in the body because because what she what uh, you know that the most pre precious position for tara for taradoi was the heart you know the heart of sarubopa that has the love for taradoi so when she in the end she realized the you know bitter reality that how she faced the truth in the end that that was you know showed uh, by the someshwar that how you know uh, sarubopa was ready to marry anyone so this was the reason that she you know set the 
chest on fire and the chest was totally an empty chest or in the end the, you know the remains of the chest were uh, you know it, 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 it just spread across the earth right so there was not the union the kind of union the kind of you know the uh, the kind of uh, prize list position that 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 was having but on the other hand it would be like a destroyed destroyed thing it would be like the destroyed love of Tara Doi and Saru Gopa or you could say the desires or the feelings or or or, or you could say the the emotions of the Tara Doi right so it, the, the 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 different you know the chest was actually spread into different pieces into small pieces after putting on the fire so 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 that was you know that very much connotes the you know the death of the desires of the tara do you right i hope this makes sense shushmita do you have any questions from the empty chest ma'am the empty chest actually uh, symbolizes the uh, you know uh, devoid of emotions uh, in the last of tara do yes Yes, when she got to know, when in the end she she realized the reality, you know, very very late. Earlier she keep on thinking that for the twelve years, you know, Saru Gopa was not at all ready to marry anyone because because he loves Sara Doi, right? So she Tara Doi, so sorry, she was under the impression only, right? So she felt that how their love was pure, how their love was true, and this was the reason that she was, you know, instead of sleeping with the uh, uh, her kids, she 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 used to sleep in the chest of the. Uh, uh, in the Saru Bopa, right? So this was the reason that the chest was very much, you know, uh, very much, uh, uh, very much close to Sa uh, Sa Tara Doi, right? But on the other hand, the, the, in the end, you know, the decision to set the chest on fire, right? So, so it, it was also the death of her desires that she, she, she no longer desires for, you know, uh, Saru Bopa, right? She no longer uh, desires to be with Saru Bopa. She no longer, you know, thinks of Saru Bopa and, and, and desires, you know, the desires that he has to feel the warmth and to feel the, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, to remain near to Saru Bopa. So that was not at all there, right? So it was actually the death of the feelings of the Tara Doi uh, as well, right? Yes. I hope it makes sense. Do you have any other yes. question? No, ma'am. Okay, so let's start with the last story that was compromise again. It was a very crisp story. Um, uh, even when you read, uh, you know, uh, the compromise or even when you read the empty chest, you feel that, you know, a very concise stories and yet they carries, you know, uh, the strong uh, messages of, you know, uh, somewhere it, it is all about plight. And, and here we will be talking about a completely different message, a very small story, you know, a very small story of a guy. And... The, First, uh, we read uh, the story that the compromise by uh, Vijayadandetha, right? So, Vijayadandetha. So, here we have a boy, right? A boy that was Askaran, right? So, the boy named Askaran and he lives in the village of Ranchi. And, uh, you know, that was a story, uh, you know, about Askaran and he belongs to Charan. So, there were, you know, Charans are also, you know, they belong to low caste, right? So, and uh, you must be aware of the idea, right? When you go to Rajasthan and even you know, nowadays, the similar phenomena that can be seen in Haryana as well, right? So there you can see a different kind of a hostels, right? Kisan hostels, Jat hostels, Bishnoi hostels. Have you heard about these? Yes, ma'am. Where are you from, Shishmita? Uh, 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 I know. Ma'am, I'm from Haryana. Okay, you are from Haryana. So where are yes, you from, uh, Shishmita? Uh, Ma'am, it's Narvana in Jean district. Wait, I'm actually teaching in Panchkula. Same from Haryana, Shushmita. Okay. Okay, so I, right now I'm teaching in, basically I'm from Punjab, but I'm teaching in Panchkula, right? In Government College, Panchkula. So uh, so you must be familiar, right? So what we were talking about, we're in the Charans. Yes. So here, so where have you done your graduation from um, uh, uh, Jean College? Uh, no, ma'am, Nirvana College. Okay, from Nirvana College. Okay, so do you, uh, you know, uh, do you have a mind of preparing for NET? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, are you preparing for the NET? Yes, ma'am. Good, right? So, so you must prepare even for the JRF, right? So I, yes, I really motivate my students to target for the JRF because, you know, it, it will help you in pursuing PhD, right? So if you have any queries, in, in the last of the lecture, I'll be giving my uh, email ID to you. If you have any query and then if you need any kind of a guidance, so you can reach to me anytime uh, by the email, right? 
I hope yes, I, I'll be you know helpful to you in any sense. So here we will be talking about you know the compromise. So here we, the kind of phenomena you know we will be talking about you know the you know there will be a different kind of a hostels, right? So these hostels uh, are actually a kind of a, you know political strategy, uh, you know designed by the political leaders. So they have jot hostels, we they have kisan hostels, then they have you know the churan hostels. So there we will be talking about a village of the ranch, a village of the Rajasthan, right? So Ranchi, there we have the churan hostel, right? A particular hostel that was devoted to a particular community, right? So such kind of a hostels were actually a kind of a, you know, a kind of a strategy used by the leaders where they meet with the, with the, uh, you could say, with the uh, youth, you know, the youth of the of the caste, right? Because you know it very well now. The whole world Indian political system is caste oriented, right? So so. So the leaders, right? So the leaders especially build these hostels, right? So whenever there will be an exam, whenever, you know, the, for the example, uh, anybody who wants to, you know, uh, prepare for the competitive exams and, and whenever, you know, they will be, even they are coming or going for any kind of exam. So they will be staying in these hostels and anybody who is prepared, you know, uh, here, having a room here for the self-study. So they, you, they regularly come and they regularly come to meet the youth there, right? So they regularly come to meet with the young kids there, you know, in order to manipulate and in order to pose the idea of the caste, you know, to, you know, get their votes, you know, get their votes and get their families' votes as well, because they know it very well. It is very easy to manipulate the kids, right? So this was the reason that there we have the Charan hostel, right? So where the people from the, you know, caste of the Charan, they were be living, right? So here we have a... A boy that was Askaran, right? So, so there was a story about the Askaran, and it was told from it, it was told from the third point of view, right? So there was somebody else who was actually narrating the story of the Askaran, and uh, there will be few, you know, se there will be some semi uh, semi encounters as well, right? So the uh, the boy was actually you know of a class eighth or class ninth, and here he was talking about this Askaran, right? So Askaran has a a, a, a weird habit that he wants uh, yeah, that all the time that he talks to himself in front of a mirror, right? So he has the habit of talking to himself, right? Most of people, right? So most of people have this uh, weird habit and same goes with Askaran. Askaran has this weird habit of talking to, you know, talking to himself in front of the mirror, right? So, so all the time, right? So whenever, you know, they, whenever there will be a conversation, right? So whenever there will be a conversation whenever he will be in the doubt whenever he wants to you know uh, question anything so he, he he just you know he just uh, goes to his room and he has the mirror and he starts talking to himself in the mirror right so there are different kind of you could say different uh, kind of a topics then whenever sometimes he will be talking about the family you know some and even sometimes he did something wrong right so it, it is a kind of a you know a kind of a brain research a kind of you know, interior tea that he is actually using you know and the whole story highlights about the human psyche uh, as you have you know already uh, i believe read psychoanalysis so you must be aware of the idea of defense mechanism Shushmita. yes ma'am so what is this defense mechanism for you how do you define it under the lens of psychoanalysis Uh, Ma'am, defense mechanism means uh, Do you have any uh, defense mechanism? If, if, if we talk about you as a personality, so do you have any uh, when behaviors, you know, behaviors uh, that, you know, people use uh, to separate themselves from experiencing uh, any kind of, you know, unpleasant events in the future or uh, any unpleasant thoughts okay so so what you are talking about it is it was a kind of escape right so yes, defense escape. mechanism is defense mechanism on the other hand is a guarded it, it, it is a kind of a guarded activity, right? So in, in order to, you know, justify your deeds and sometimes in order to, you know, justify your deeds and in order to, you know, uh, not to put a blame on oneself and on uh, in order to, you know, uh, have a complete different personality because you know it very well. There are a lot of, you know, multi-personalities we have in one personality. You know? So there are different dimensions of our personality. Human psyche is really unpredictable when it comes to, you know, uh, oneself, right? When we talk about the mind, that how, you know, it is consisting of conscious, subconscious and unconscious, right? So 
so defense mechanism is uh, is a part of you know a, a part of our you know guarding ourselves right so gu guarding ourselves or you know uh, safeguarding ourselves or you could say uh, you know justifying our deeds and so you know we all have such kind of a defense mechanism for example a very basic of cell you know defense mechanism i would like to give that with the story of you know the fox and the grapes right so the you know, fox yes. was not able to reach the grapes and she, in the end she said that grapes are sour right so this is a kind of a defense mechanism right we try to justify our deeds and uh, sometimes we try to you know justifying our deeds sometimes we are too much involved in that uh, deed that we come across a complete counter argument like the fox we have right so in order to you know she was not able to get the grapes so she put the blame on the grapes that grapes are sour but on the other hand there are the kind of a defense mechanism that we developed uh, for example uh, when we completely you know a key parcels away from that particular thing right the, the thing we were we obsessing over or the thing who was very much you know affected us so the way we completely have you know uh, we completely you know uh, turn away from the particular thing so this also you know terms to be a defense mechanism right so for example you know our hobbies are a kind of our defense mechanism right that we spend time from the hustle and bustle of the society right uh, we, we we try to you know devise ourselves in a different way right so you, this was the reason that people say that you must have a hobby right so the any kind of a physical activity that we do you know away from the mental activity and same goes with the, you know uh, sometimes mental activity that we do in order to restrain our physical activity so these are a kind of a defense mechanism so here basically the idea of askaran uh, you know talking to the mirror was not at all a kind of a defense mechanism it was just you know borders on the integrity that he was actually talking to uh, his own self right so there will be a different kind of occasions for example when he he did something wrong so there will be few example that i would like to quote you know quickly that that one day he was scoring very less in the paper right so he went to you know he 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 went to his mirror and he was asking and the other person right the same person in the mirror that he was asking that that why you are scoring so less marks and he was saying the question paper was difficult and he was and again the counter argument came wasn't the question paper difficult for all of uh, for all of the other people and he said yes and he was saying oh, why are you failed other people you know uh, but on the other hand other people score very good marks it was all about the fault lies in you so there are such kind of arguments that he will be having on a regular basis with the mirror and sometimes you know uh, and same goes when you know when the conversation deepen and deepen and he was asking that what about your family do you know how many means he has uh -huh. how how he was you know making the both hands meet and how much you know he has spent on your study so such kind of a conversation askaran was actually having in the charan hostel right when he was talking to his mirror so when he was talking to his you know his marks his assignments and uh, ultimately you know he, he comes to know that he is here for the bigger purpose he is there to you know to talk about you know to to, to serve his family for, for the bigger purpose of the you know upliftment or betterment of the family and 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 by having you know pursuing his career he is able to you know make better for you know for for, for himself and his family right so such kind of a uh, you know arguments and counter arguments he used to have in front of a mirror right so it is the same person there will be nobody else who is guiding that Uh, boy askaran but on the other hand he is indulging in the same arguments and counter arguments in front of the mirror right and on the other hand there was a very you know the incident as was uh, as i was talking about of the assignment and one day he 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 got a very late right uh, in, the, in in the morning and he simply you know straight went to the uh, mirror and there the mirror were asking that i told you that you should not you know uh, uh, you should not watch movie late at night you should you should invest your time in a better way so so you should you know you, you should not waste your time and see here you are you are so much late and on the other hand askaran is trying to give a lot of you know a lot of justifications that why he woke up late so such kind of a conversation you know he was regularly talking to the mirror over it and then there was a very important you know uh, uh, conversation then when he was talking about his own dreams right so one day he was actually chasing the girls he, he must be attracted to uh, towards uh, towards a girl uh, a girl right so he was on a, a phase of he was studying in 8th and 9th so because of the hormonal changes are in the in the in the body of adolescence so it is a very co common common you know common experience he must be having at his age 
but on the other hand he was rushing to the mirror and he was saying that that i i, I was chasing a girl or maybe the girls were chasing me but on the other hand the other side of the mirror he was very much you know he was very much angry and he was asking that how could you right so have you forgotten that why you are here right so you 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 should not you know involve in 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 chasing the girls but on the other hand you know askar and was saying that i am not thinking about others i am just thinking about my dreams i am just thinking about my dreams on the other hand the somebody you know the, the somebody who is in the mirror and he was thinking about that what about your dreams right have you forgotten right so 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 your dreams are bigger than the people right so your dreams are bigger than the uh, you know your family are bigger than the people who are you know actually here Uh, you know why you are here for those dreams right so here you can see that that how he is constantly you know indulging in a kind of a conversation with the mirror right so this also talks about the interiority of the you know human psyche that how he really wants to you know uh, wants to listen the voice of the conscious mind and on the other hand and if we you know read the story from the psychoanalysis so there will be a constant you know conversation between id and super ego right so there will be the id and super ego it might be ego or super ego talking to each other and in order to you know and askaran was trying to develop his personality over these three borders right of ego super ego id and super ego right so this was all about the kind of in, you know the kind of conversations he had and they indulged in this kind of a accusation and counter accusation and and, and uh, but one day right so the story you know uh, ends like that that one day you know, he was actually you know talking to the uh, mirror and there he was talking about that what about myself you know there was the asker and was being actually in you know, a selfish here and he was talking about what about my dreams right i'm here for my dreams and he, and the other person he was saying about right you know you should not do something about it and then asker and is saying that are you different from me right but on the other hand the other person from the dream right the, the mirror the same person the say that that no we are same right then the asker and right in the end he said that then the problem is the mirror right so so this was the last conversation he had with the dream and in the end he broke the dream into sorry he the last conversation he had with the mirror right and in the end he broke the mirror into the pieces right so this is all about the end of the story right so the the mirror right so there was a kind of a wall between the two selves of the asker and that was you know it, it might be id and super ego or it might be ego or super ego right so the wall was broken that time when the asker and decides to broke the mirror right and uh, he broke the mirror into the pieces when they said that we are the same and the problem is really the mirror he said that the problem is not me and the problem is not you the problem is the mirror right so the this way he broke the mirror into the pieces and they two had a compromise right so there comes the title of the story that how the two had a compromise and from that day you know the last line of the story was uh, you know quite intense and where we got to know that how the two had a compromise and in the end we got to know that how our osk you know askar and he he has become a very uh, a, a station police officer right he became a station officer in the police though he is on a very low and humble rank but when we talk about the assets assets of the you know askaran so people were actually you know saying that he has assets in the lakhs so it is all about the you know what what do you think what do you think the the decision of askaran you know breaking the mirror how do you perceive the decision what do you think that why why he did that maybe he was fed up uh, uh, fed up and always in a dilemma yeah as we have already discussed that that it was the wall right basically what he was doing the whole you know idea of conversation with the mirror was he was actually you know the mirror or you could say the mirror in the image in the mirror was actually the voice of his conscience right that we have you know talked about it yesterday as well right the voice of the conscious the so same goes here it was the voice of the consciousness right the voice of the conscious that was keep on you know stopping him refraining him from doing the unethical activities right it was the voice of the you know conscious that was actually you know give you know giving him light and keep on guiding him towards what is right and how to pursue a, an ethical life but on the other hand as you know it very well right the story talks about you know the dilemmas of the modern man that how modern man doesn't want to listen to the voice of the conscious right the modern man is so easily tempted by the idea of you could say it you know talking about his own dreams when he was saying that i'm talking about my dreams how he was attracted to the woman and how he completely forgot the familiar duties or burdens he has he feels at the point of a time that he is overburdened with the with the familiar duties and familial goals 
goes and on the other hand and in the end we got to know that even though he was a, and a simple officer but he has assets in the in the lab so so the, the that that was a complete hint at the corruption that he was doing right so the decision to you know break the mirror it can be you know that the, he was actually you know, choosing uh, the the voice of ed over the ego and super ego right so in the sense of psychoanalysis uh, and on the uh, on the metaphorical level so it, it was talking about the modern modern man right so how the modern man is completely you know stopping and uh, and modern man is not having any conversation with the voice of consciousness right we never thought of you know we never thought of wrong and right whenever we pursue any action whenever we take any kind of a decision we never think about right and wrong we just simply you know swept with the desire and and swept with the instinct that this is what i feel right right on the other hand we justify ourselves by saying that this is what i feel right and i will i will stand by my decision but because i feel that this is right for me i this is my intuition right on the name of saying it institution or instinct we never have a conversation or a dialogue with our you know inner voice we we keep on you know shutting our uh, voice of the conscious that is what you know the decision of the asker and that how he killed and destroyed the voice of consciousness right the the decision to kill the you know the broke uh, break the and uh, you could say the mirror that was actually an attempt to you know to kill the voice uh, the kill the voice of consciousness and it talks about that how the present scenario modern man right we hardly have a conversation right the kind of conversation asked one used to have with the mirror we don't have any kind of a conversation right nowadays you know with our voice of consciousness right so it talks about the modern man and you know and the compromise in the end as the title says the compromise he made it was a compromise that he made with his soul it is the compromise that he made with his conscious right that he will be overridden with the desire he will be overridden with the you know corruption with the selfishness and he will you know he will snub the you know voice of the consciousness and you know it, 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 and And you know, con- the story talks about that how you know we really need to you know think about the values and the moral standards, right? If we really you know need to live a life of a peace, but on the other hand, on the pursuit of you know material things, on the name of development. We, we we never stop to look uh, inside ourselves right on the other hand we never used to have a kind of a conversation we never stop and look inside we we don't you know have a conversation with our you know with with our with our voice of consciousness and on the other hand here you know the protagonist you know though he was you know when he was talking to the mirror he was actually talking to his own consciousness he was talking to his super ego right but on the other hand he was overridden by the desire By, by by the idea of the selfish interest and by the idea of you know, his development which he sees in the corruption which he sees in the selfishness right so on the name of you know it, it also talks about the other aspect of the modern man that on the name of you know uh, on the name of development growth and on the name of personal achievement how we can resort to you know destroy the voice of consciousness we keep on exploiting ourselves we keep on manipulating ourselves and sometimes you know we, we we completely shut down all the doors of righteousness in order to you know uh, went to any extent of our personal achievement right so this is all about you know finally he decides to break the you know the mirror because he is not able to tolerate tolerate you know tolerate any right so as you have said that he was always in the dilemma that what to listen id or super ego and the voice of you know selfishness and the voice of conscious conscious and in the end he chose the corrupt corrupt mean and this was the reason that even though he was an humble officer he was even though he is an officer at a very lower simple post but he has money you know he has assets and money in the lakhs right so this is all of the story that that how you know it, it was a kind of a you could say a kind of a lesson that you know we we need to learn that in the pursuit of a life of a morality and you know immorality and corruption right the path we are actually following you know, uh, 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 and and uh, uh, the path full of you know immorality and corruption and how we are you know completely shutting the voice of uh, conscience and how we are completely you know diverting uh, towards the corruption and selfishness and we never had a dialogue we never stop and think uh, and look inside ourselves right i hope this much was clear shishmata do you have any query yes, about No, okay i hope these two stories are very you know easy and uh, simple clear concise and we'll be meeting uh, tomorrow is the last lecture where we, i'll try to cover the poetry right so i had a word with the director sir but he said that even if we receive any query from the child only then we are able to you know uh, have a class so there is no provision of compensatory class on my part right i cannot arrange any class on my own
or or they cannot even arrange the class on their own so if if you write and if you you know i want any uh, compensatory class so you have to write and you have to justify your reason for that right so technically we will be meeting uh, for the last lecture tomorrow and i'll try to cover the poetry section i hope much is clear to you yes so we'll be meeting tomorrow right so we'll be discussing poetry okay. thank you ma'am okay okay shashmita uh, i hope this is for all today sir okay ma'am thank you ji thank you